G'day folks, Ren here and welcome to my Camp Spoopathon vlog. I had so many plans this week for like kind of camp setting things. I was going to go on so many hikes and uh, that's not going to happen. I am having a bit of a flare up with all my um, chronic health situations. I've been kind of battling a migraine for about four days now um, and I do have chronic migraines and it was just really frustrating that it's happened right now. Hiking is definitely out of the question, that's for sure. Getting lots of reading done also may be out of the question, um, but we'll see what happens. Today I haven't read anything. Hopefully I will get to read at some point soon, but oof, today's been a day. I had uni this morning, which was like a good enough time, but the way I'm feeling was really hard to like, pay attention and really hard to just have any kind of emotion that wasn't, oh god, I'm dying. So there was that. I'm feeling kind of... <clears throat> basically. I'm really tired and I don't want to do much, but it's a really nice day outside and I feel like someone needs some loves, so this one needs some loves. Do you need some loves? Do you need some loves? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, he needs some loves. So I think I'll just take him to the dog park. He can run around and have some fun. God, he's cute. My head hurts. This isn't a good start to Camp Spoopathon. Yeah. Okay, so I did go to the dog park with Chopper. Hopefully I got some footage of that. It was very cute. He had a great time. Uh, we only stayed there for like half an hour because like I was not feeling good. Yeah, so we came back and I chilled out for a little bit because again my head was kind of starting to hurt again. Luckily that went away. Not really went away, but it calmed down enough that I could get some work done and I remember that I had to finish editing a video so that's taken about an hour maybe longer so I just finished that it's now exporting so that's gonna take quite a while um, but I also have to do the thumbnail so I figure that I will do the thumbnail and then I'll do a couple little um, bits and pieces around the house that I have to get to and while I'm doing all that, I can listen to my audiobook. This will be my audiobook, The Ghostwood Song by Erica Waters, because this is the first stop on my Camp Spoopathon trail um, for the prompt ghostly. So I will hopefully be starting this soon, and hopefully in my next update I can tell you that I read some.
Girls Club song also. Oh, it sounds good. Alright, I think I'm going to call it a night for day one on Spoopathon. I got to chapter 10, which is page 106 of Ghostwood Song. Um, I'm loving it so far. The audiobook is amazing because the narrator it has this um, like southern twang and it just it works so well for this book. We're basically following Shady, who is a fiddle player. Like, the main plot of the story is that her brother is accused of killing their stepdad. So that's kind of just happened um, from where I'm up to. And I really love that the mother is like, you know, you stand by your brother, you stand by your brother, that's what siblings do. And Shady's like, well, yeah, of course. Like, I love a good sibling relationship, and this seems to have it, so I'm loving that. Um, we've also got this paranormal-esque vibe, something to do with ghosts and um, Shady's dad's fiddle. I have a feeling that like that's the fiddle that could like bring about ghosts or something. So Shady wants to find the fiddle to talk to her stepdad's ghost to like exonerate her brother. I'm enjoying it. Also Shady is bisexual and she comes out and says that in like chapter two and she has kind of a romantic interest in her friend Sarah who's also a female um, and then she's also having this like flirtation with this boy and a part of me wants to be like oh they're doing that whole um, bisexual stereotype of you know more than one partner you know gotta have like one of each kind type thing but it doesn't feel like that I don't know but as a bisexual, I'm pretty okay with this representation, and I'm loving everything about this book so far. The vibe is amazing, and it's a good time. Alright, day two for Camp Spoopathon. It's still morning. I just wanted to say I have woken up without a headache, and this is just really good for me. Ooh, I'm hoping it continues. <laughs> I still don't know if I would do any of those hikes that I wanted to do because I need to keep the no headache. For today, I actually have a lot of things I need to do, so I don't know how much reading I'm going to get done. I want to do a bit of housework this morning, then I'm going out to lunch with my sister-in-law, then straight after that I am going to uni. And then straight after that, I want to go to the gym. And then I'll finally be home at like 6 o'clock. So I have a pretty full day. And I also need to do some uni work at some point. Because I can't just keep putting off uni to read books. Because it's my final year, my last semester. I need to do work. Um, I haven't read any more of Ghostwood Song since I last updated you. I might try and get some done while I'm doing some housework this morning, just because I have the audio. Um, but something else I'm just really in the mood to read right now is Soul Eater Volume 10. I have recently just become absolutely obsessed with Soul Eater. It's kind of like my personality now. I love everything about it, except for those moments of just, what do they call it, fan service? They're not good. But everything else is great. Um, and I have been waiting for this to come in from the library for so long. It's been in transit for like three weeks. Oof, it was rough. I just, I really want to read this. Um, but I think to try and count this for a Camp Spoopathon book, I would have to like stretch a prompt. So I could kind of class this as ghostly, maybe. Because this whole thing is about death and collecting souls 
So we have a school run by Lord Death, like the literal death. Um, and then it's just these kids at their school, the school run by Lord Death, and there are Meisters and weapons, and so humans that can turn into weapons or humans that can wield the weapons, and they go around trying to collect like evil souls. So if Lord Death says someone needs to die because they are very evil, the weapon and Meister go and kill that person and eat their soul. So I can kind of really stretch the prompt of ghostly to be like this involves death and souls and what is a ghost except the soul of someone who has died. Maybe. I'm stretching it a lot, I know. But I just really want to read it. <sighs> I haven't actually got as much done this morning as I thought I would have. I'm only about halfway through volume 10 of Soul Eater. Um, having a great time, like always. It's so, so good. Because my friend Max recommended this to me, I just constantly bombard him with all of my thoughts anytime something happens. So I'm just like going, oh my god, oh my god, this has happened, this has happened. And he sent through this link to this, um, uh, like, piano cover of the Soul Eater theme song. I'll put the link in the description because it's amazing. And I was just, like, rocking out to that so much. It's so good. And it was very um, well-timed because in this, Soul plays the piano for everyone. So, oh, such a good song. I'm obsessed with it. It'll be the only thing I listen to for at least a month. Good times. Right, now to install a baby seat. much later I went to go see my sister-in-law we couldn't actually go out for lunch because the car seat it like it didn't ha it couldn't lock into the anchor point I just stayed at her place for like three or four hours 
um, it was mainly just spent um, cuddling the Bubba, uh, which was just amazing. I was, oh, I almost died because he's opening his eyes more because he's six weeks old. So his eyes are like only just kind of starting to open and oh, it was just beautiful. Yeah, what a cute kid. Um, but yeah, so I was just holding him for probably like an hour and a half, which is like the longest I've ever held him. And it was just great. It was a good time. But that visit completely drained me. I'm just beat. So today, unfortunately, didn't go to uni and I'm not going to go to the gym, which I was really looking forward to the gym. But I got to just take care of myself and not move very much because I can kind of feel a headache coming on. I did feel it a couple hours ago and I thought it was just because I hadn't eaten, um, which like can happen for me. So I ate something like two hours ago and I'm still having the headache. I'm not in a good, uh, not in a good way right now. I'm, I'm going through some things. This is just such a great vlog, isn't it? Just me going, ow. Um, but I did just finish Soul Eater Volume 10, and I loved it. Of course I did. I wasn't not going to love it. But yes, we got a lot of good fights. We got the Team Resonance, which was really cool. Um got the the piano stuff which is very very nice internal investigation because they figured out there is a spy in the DWMA there's this whole thing with Blackstar and him um, like I didn't realize it but he is like being affected by the madness so that like it makes a lot of sense because the last couple of chapters he's been acting kind of like a jerk more so than usual so it makes sense that he was like affected by the madness and some of the panels in this were really really cool like when the madness comes it flips from so you know so it was like this and then the madness comes and it's all like blacked out so it was very cool so this will not count for my camp spoopathon well, I mean, it's going to count for this vlog, because I'm showing you, but it won't count for, like, the points. Or maybe. I don't know. My head hurts. Okay, so we are on day three for Camp Spoopathon. Um, I didn't really update you last night. I kind of fell asleep. I was just so ridiculously tired yesterday that, yeah, I just kind of crashed. Um, which is fine. I obviously needed it. But last night I did manage to read another 60-ish pages of Ghostwood Song. I'm not even halfway yet. Um, I don't know why this is like taking so long. Like it shouldn't be because I'm really enjoying it. It's definitely spooky vibes. Um, we've got amazing sibling relationship. We've got a bisexual main character. I feel like if I just stick with this until I finish it and then start my other books I'm not gonna get all of my books read for Camp Spoopathon so I think what I might do is I might try and start like at least my next one like my next two books were like a graphic novel and a manga so I might try and start those and I figure that as long as I finish this before I get to the killer then I'll still count all the points yeah. So I think that's what I might do. I mean, I'm usually reading at least two to three books at a time, and just reading one is clearly not working for me. So, yeah. I will probably start... What was my next one? It's probably Laura Dean, who's breaking up with me. So I might start one of those later today. But... Today is another very busy day. Like, I'm so silly for, like, wanting to start a booktube channel 
right when university starts up again. I made good choices. But yeah, so I have a couple hours of uni today and then I have to go get the car seat fitted properly. Um, so I'm going to a place that's going to fit it for me. Hopefully they can tell me if I can actually have this car seat in my car. And then, yes, once again, I would like to go to the gym later tonight. But I'll have a couple hours where I might be able to do some reading. But I do also realise that I keep putting off any of my uni assignments that I should probably start. So I might try and get a head start on some of that. But as you saw, I pulled out a rat test because uh, my brother tested positive yesterday and I was at his house for three and a half hours yesterday. And while I didn't, like he stayed in a separate room basically the whole time and like I didn't get close to him. So I'm just going to take a rat test before I leave for uni. I don't think I'll test positive at all. Just because, yeah, I wasn't close to him during yesterday. Um, but, you know, better be safe than sorry. Okay, so I've actually managed to do some things this evening. And I'm feeling pretty good about it. I am not going to the gym. Who's shocked? Not me. I just... If there's ever a time when I'm not feeling great and I'm stressed and I feel like I have too much stuff to do, the first thing that I'm like, I can put that off to do everything else, it's always gym. And which isn't good because then my body feels really bad. Because I need, with all my chronic illness things, I need to be moving my body. And my instructor at the gym is really good at knowing my chronic issues and knowing how to help them. Um, sorry, I'm cooking dinner while I'm doing all of this. Um, and then when I was preparing dinner, I was listening to Ghostwood Song. I've only managed to listen to uh, about like 11 more percent. And like, it's just, there's so much about this book that like, there are just no words. Like you can't talk about this book. And sometimes it feels like there's not much happening. But it's still so good just the vibes and I know I keep talking about the vibes but the vibes are good the vibes are very good the way that they talk about music like especially bluegrass music it's really really just like hits you right in the chest type thing because like they clearly love it and it's just a beautiful beautiful thing to read about I started Laura Dean keeps breaking up with me I'm only a couple pages in um, and I'm surprisingly enjoying it. To be fair, it's only been a few pages, but I like the art. I like the story that's happening, even though it's, it is exactly what I thought it was. It was, it's what the title says, you know, Laura Dean keeps breaking up with someone and it just keeps happening over and over. But for some reason, I'm totally fine with that happening. I really can't describe it. I need to read more of it and then I can let you know. I'll try and read a little bit more tonight, but I think the main goal is Ghostwood Song and then some uni work. <laughs> we shall see what happens. So I just finished Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me by Mariko Tamaki and Rosemary Valero O'Connell. <sighs> this was a graphic novel I never thought I'd read. I really didn't think it was my thing. Um, I loved it. <laughs> it just, like, it has a very sad feel because they're breaking up all the time and it's about, um, Freddie, the main character, just trying to figure out what love means and if the love she has is right for her and her sometimes girlfriend Laura Dean kind of being really not great. There was something just really bittersweet about this whole thing and I really liked the friendships that were in here. I loved all of the queer representation like I think there might have been one heterosexual person this whole thing. It was great. I haven't put it through Core Pile yet but I'm 
leaning towards like a four like probably a high four um but i really want to buy this actually too so i can just reread it because like just the vibes were really good so i highly recommend picking it up so this fulfills the uh deadly romance or deadly lovers lovers rest one of those things the second um, the second part of my trail for Kemp's Bipathon. It completes that prompt. It'll also get me 25 points for LGBT rep. And it'll also get me 25 points because I read it in a day. It was so good. Highly recommend, actually. I just... I don't know why I kept thinking that I just wouldn't like it but I really did. So today is Thursday so we're on day four of Camp Spoopathon. It's already like five o'clock. Um, I have been really busy all day so I had uni this morning and that was oof coding. Ugh. Uh, it was not great um, but that was whatever. And then after class, Max was like, do we need to get sushi? And I was like, yes, we need to go get sushi. Max and I went to the sushi train. As we were having the sushi, I was talking to Max about My Hero Academia and all the different like um, manga that there is of it. And he was like, oh yeah, at Big W, there's like the Deku's notebook, basically. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? And so then immediately after we had food, we went to Big W. And he showed me this. That's my Hero Academia Ultra Analysis by Kohi Horikoshi. Yeah. Um, so it really is like what it sounds like so it's like um okay so we'll go things like this right so it's basically just a big analysis of the characters um like who they have like relationships with what their strengths are what their quirks are their like shining moments in the series and like we've even got like you know class b as like obviously as well as class a um, you got the, the top three, um, people from that other school, what is their school called? Shiketsu, Shiketsu, yes, Sh Shiketsu High people, um, you got the heroes, and we have villains, and like a whole bunch of other stuff, and this is so much a me thing. Like, Max was saying, he was like, I knew you would like this because you like details. I'm like, I love details. Like, give me all the extra little info about characters and I am there. So this is just, oh, I'm really enjoying it. I said to him, I was like, I'm trying not to read this right now because I need to do uni work, even though I haven't done any work since I got home. And he was just like, read it, read it, read it. And I was like, okay. So I'm reading it. Um, I'm only like four pages into it already, but I'm loving it. Like, it's so much fun and just like very much something I would enjoy. This is really like for the inner geek of like anyone. Now, for actual reading that was on my TBR, I haven't done any. Uh, not today. <laughs> I've just been too busy doing other things. So the thing I'm meant to be reading today is Drifting Dragons by Taku Kuwabara. Um, this was going to be my book that I read while sprinting and I might do read this later on tonight. Yeah, I still don't really know what this is about except for like they're hunting dragons and it looks kind of steampunk-y. Again, I'm talking about Max so much this um, update but again <laughs> Max recommended this to me so I'm gonna try it. I will try and get to this later on tonight. I am going to the gym, hallelujah, actually going today, and then after that, yeah, I might put on some sprints and read this. 
Day five of Camp Spoopathon, and it's already like 20 to 4. I swear, I'm not usually this busy, but this week has just been very busy. I had to take my sister in law and my nephew to the doctors this morning because my brother has COVID, so they had to go get tested. Um, so far, I am totally fine. I have been taking some rat tests. I'm fine, I don't have any symptoms, um, but yeah, I took them to the doctor, and then I just stayed um, with them for quite a long time. I need to go to the gym, like, right now. So, I'm off to the gym. See you in a bit. <gasps> True. I think I read one Australian uh, Christmas book and it was like this like women's contemporary it was called the 12 days of Christmas and they went up and down like, you that, yeah. yeah the New South Wales coast like trying to find her grandma's like first love who was a Dave oh. I have just now been able to finish Ghostwood song and I really liked it. It was so just beautifully written and had this like haunting, creepy vibe and just like it really like sucks you into almost this whole other world, even though it isn't set in a whole other world. But it's just the way it's written, you really feel like you're there. The thing with Shady's brother and like who killed the stepdad, um, it did end up being who I kind of suspected it would be. Uh, the reason for it was something I never could have anticipated, um, but like in a good way. Uh, so that, the how that was all done was really good. Um, the like haunting aspect of it was very cool. The whole reasoning for the fiddle was really interesting. I didn't expect that. Is there a baby? Is there a baby? Do you like the book? The whole like family secret stuff was really interesting too. I didn't expect any of that and it was nothing too like outlandish. Like it was all very real world things. Um, so yeah, I really did like that and this whole idea of like things that scare us only have power because we are scared of them. That whole concept was really interesting and I love like that kind of thing. But yes, I did finish this. I loved it. I haven't put it through core pile yet, but very high four, maybe even a five. I don't know but highly recommend this for this just like softly eerie vibe and just beautiful writing and I really want to read more of Erica Waters things I know they've written um, the river has teeth wait it's on the back of this the river has teeth yeah yeah so I really want to read that at some point this was just amazing. So it's really good timing actually that there are sprints happening now because that is the next prompt I need to fill. Because So I finished this for Campfire Beta 
or alpha for the first one for the ghostly prompt so that got me 25 points for completing the prompt and 25 points for it being LGBT because the main character is bisexual then I I can't be bothered going to get Laura Dean but it's over there um, I read Laura Dean keeps breaking up with me for the deadly romance prompt so I got another 25 points for completing that prompt 25 for it being LGBT and 25 points for reading it in a day so we're at let me math 125 points we're at so that's good so I only need 25 points to be able to kill the killer which is great so the next prompt I need to go to is sprinting so I'm currently sprinting so I don't technically need to read a book for that because I'm sprinting but I probably will try and keep with my TBR so I will be picking up Drifting Dragons by Taku Kuwabara finished Drifting Dragons volume one and it is not for me like the art is really good and like the story's good this is very much just a me thing I really like dragons so the fact that these people are hunting catching killing eating so the fact that they're doing all of this to dragons is kind of sad <laughs> also i'm a vegetarian and the way that they were talking about the meat in this was just too much for my fragile little heart to hold i was getting a little queasy like the first couple um pages it was ooh, it was not good but again this is very much a me thing for the reason why I don't like this. It's good, like it's a very well done manga, but it's not for me. So this will get me 25 for completing the sprinting prompt because I read it during Sasha Reed's sprints. And it'll also get me 25 points for recommended to you because it was recommended to me by Max. And it'll also get me 25 points for read in a day because I read it in 50 minutes. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so welcome to the sixth day of Camp Spoopathon. Is there a choppy coming? Hey, we see a choppy head. Um, this morning I haven't been reading. I've just been doing a bunch of stuff around the house and like ad mini type stuff because I kind of put everything off for Camp Spoopathon. So I kind of need to get back into the swing of like real life. Um, so I also filmed a video today, which is good because I needed to. And then I was just on YouTube trying to see if there were just some other random little videos that I could film. And I realized I had a notification. So I have got my first comment on one of my videos, which is a fun time as a little me booktuber. Um, so it was really cool and it was from a person I've seen around the booktube community before and they were on the sprints I was on last night on Sasha's channel so that's really cool the book I need to read for Camp Spoopathon is The Chain by Adrian McKinty this will be for the final prompt which is thrilling because this is a thriller okay so 
what has been happening in this? This is a chain email, um, <laughs> but in real world settings. So we've got the main character, Rachel. She is a single mother, I think like recently divorced, and she has a 13 year old kid named Kylie. Um, Kylie got kidnapped. The kidnapper called and said, you know, I've got your kid. Follow these instructions. If you want her to live and if you want to get her back, you have to now go and kidnap someone else's kid um, and pay a ransom and all this stuff. And so that's been like fun and it's really cool that you get to see the perspective of the kidnappers as well as from like Rachel herself. We get so many point of views in this, but it doesn't feel chaotic. It works really, really well. I can't like go into too much detail. And at this point, like 140 pages, not much has happened. Like there's not much you can do to spoil this book, I don't think. Because it's, it is what it says on the tin type of thing. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying this. It's so much fun, but yeah, it's not going to be one of those books that's like an all-time favourite. It's just really entertaining. So if you want a really entertaining book, pick up The Chain. It's a fun time. Spoopathon is officially over. Okay, so I didn't actually update you yesterday because I, once again, was very busy. I spent basically the entire day with my nephew and it was great. I had a lovely time, but I did read a lot yesterday. <laughs> so I did manage to complete Camp Spoopathon. I read all the books that I wanted to and I'm actually really happy about that. So, these are all the books I ended up reading, plus one more, which I've already returned to the library. But I'll go through them and tell you everything I read. So on the first day you saw that I read Soul Eater Volume 10. That didn't give me any kind of points towards Camp Spoopathon, but I read it during this week anyways. And that was obviously a five star. I love Soul Eater. It was so much fun. And I just love being in this world with these characters that I love so much. And we're really at the point now where there's a lot of plot happening. So yeah, so that book I gave five stars. Loved it. Had a great time. And then for our first stop on the Camp Spoopathon trail, we had Campfire Alpha. And the prompt for that was Ghostly. So I read Ghostwood Song by Erica Waters. This took me a long time to read, weirdly, even though I loved it. I ended up giving this five stars. It was so good. I know all week I've just been going on about the vibes, but there are like top tier, quality vibes. Yeah, really the only thing I can talk about is the vibes of this book because they're immaculate. It's just eerie, kind of creepy but like hauntingly beautiful. The writing is phenomenal. It really sucks you into this world and it's just oh, so good. 
it's a really good book. Everyone go read it. This was five stars. So this got me 25 points for completing the prompt of Ghostly, and then also got me 25 points for being a LGBT book. So that's 50 points for one book. Then the next stop was Lover's Rest, and for that it was A Deadly Romance. And for that I read Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me by Mariko Tamaki and Rosemary Valero O'Connell. This was a really surprising book for me. I never thought I would like this, and I ended up giving it five stars. I really liked just the kind of bittersweet vibe of the whole story. And, like, you don't get much of, like, the characters, but... It was still just, I don't know, there was something about it that was just really captivating and it's a really hard story to talk about because it's a graphic novel. Um, the art was really pretty and it's basically an entirely queer cast, which love that. It was really great and highly recommend. It's a five star. So this one got me a lot of points. This got me 25 points for completing the prompt. It got me 25 points for being an LGBT book, and it got me 25 points for reading in a day. That's 75 points for one book. And I'm almost at the amount of points that I need to kill the killer, so this was good. Then we have Campfire Beta, and the prompt for that was sprinting. So as you saw throughout the week, I was on a few sprints, and the one in particular that I am counting for this prompt was the sprints that I did on... Um, Sasha Reed's channel and during that I read Drifting Dragons Volume 1 by Taku Kawabara. This is a manga that was recommended to me by my friend Max and it's basically whaling but they're hunting dragons. So they're hunting dragons, killing them, eating them and selling the meat and selling the bones and the oil and you know that whole kind of system of what whalers do but doing it for dragons. I only gave this three stars. I really didn't like it as much as Max wanted me to. It just wasn't for me and I kind of knew that before reading it but I thought I would give it a go anyways. I actually in the beginning of this felt like physically sick because of the way they were talking about the meat and I'm a vegetarian so just hearing them go on and on about how amazing this meat was and preparing it was really making me nauseous. So that might have like tainted how my enjoyment went of this. But I get why my friend likes it, but it just wasn't for me. It might be for other people. Like it is a really nice story if you can get over the dragon killing thing, which apparently I couldn't. This one got me a lot of points as well. So it got me 25 points for completing the prompt, it got me 25 points for reading in a day, and it got me 25 points for being recommended to me. So that is another 75 points. Then we have Pixies Park, which the prompt for that was read together. So as you saw, I put on a read with me from Ashley's channel, A Frolic Through Friction, and she has great vibes, honestly. She should just always do read with me. So they're so good. So while that was on, I read My Hero Academia Volume 2 by Kohi Horikoshi. Horikoshi? My Hero Academia is such a fun time. I really enjoy it. This one, we're still at like the very beginning of the story. And it was just so cute. I love it. I obviously gave this five stars. So we've just got... Bakugo's origin story is kind of what they call it, so just a bit of the background on him. And we have their first battle training, which was like really fun. And it is, this volume in particular is very much exactly what happens in the anime, so like no real big surprises there. But this was great, I loved it, five stars. So this got me 25 points for completing the prompt and 25 points for reading in a day. So that's another 50 points. So by this point, I needed 150 points to kill that killer, and I did it. That killer is gone. So that was awesome. So after that, we got to Brad's Oak, and the prompt for that was thrilling. And for that, I read The Chain by Adrian McKinty. This was so entertaining. I had such a great time. 
this is basically those chain emails that were around a lot in the early 2000s where you know like if you don't send this to this many people you're gonna die. It's really hard to talk about thrillers because there's only so much you can say. I gave this four stars, it was so entertaining, I was just kind of hooked and like it was just such a fun time and that's really all I want from my thrillers is just to be entertained. There was no real big like shocking moments, it was just really exciting but no big surprises but I think I definitely preferred the first half of the book compared to the second half but it was still really great such a fun time four stars so then technically I was at spoop cabin I think it is is the ending um, but I did also end up reading a conspiracy of ravens by Leah Moore John Repian and Sally Jane Thompson I started this when I was on the read with me with Ashley. I got halfway through during that time and then I finished this yesterday. This is just about a bunch of girls finding out they are descendants of badass females that had this like mystical power um, that is contained in stones. And so it's about um, this main character Anne and she inherits a stone from her great-great-grand... great-great-aunt, I think? And then she tries and um, reunites all of the other girls with their stones and they form this little group and it's like... It's hard to explain what goes on. I gave this three stars. It was really good up to a point and then at the end it just went completely off the rails. <laughs> the end just kind of came out of nowhere. I almost want to say like the first 75% of this book is just about getting this group of girls together and figuring out how their powers work. And then the last 15% is like, oh here's some plot. And like we're gonna have a villain and you're gonna have to like take down the villain. But this villain's been there the whole time. And it was just a little too like out of nowhere and then there was this whole thing about like technology with the magic and I was like what? It, mm, the ending just went weird but until then I was really enjoying it. I really liked the art and the dynamic of the girls and I really love like badass females so like I would recommend giving this a go um, just be aware the ending kind of goes a bit woo. I think this would have been better if it could have been like split up into like two volumes and have the first volume of like them getting together and then the second volume of really like fleshing out that other plot but it was a fun time and I'm glad I read it. So those are all the books I read for Camp Spoopathon. I had such a fun time even though I was kind of sick for some of it and I didn't get to do all the things I wanted to do but it was such a fun time and I read some really great books. I had a good time. I hope you've enjoyed the vlog. Let me know what you read for Camp Spoopathon and if you got that killer. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!